in my role as deputy president. The president assigned me many responsibilities, which I discharged with distinction from where I sit. And that is why, in our first term, we rolled out our plan to build the standard gauge railway. We have built 700 kilometers. I was part and parcel of the entire, entire delivery plan. We set out to build 10,000 kilometers of tarmac road in Kenya. By June this year, in three months or so, we will have actually done 11,000 kilometers. I sat long hours with officials in government to design how that was going to happen. Same case to our TVET program. Same case to all the other programs that we delivered on our first term. And to demonstrate our success, we were re-elected in our second term with twice the margin we had been elected in 2013, clearly demonstrating that the people of Kenya were happy with our delivery. Unfortunately, in our second term, because of the political dynamics that came into play, uh, the president told me that he wanted to do things differently. And he didn't want what had become normal in Kenya that this was Uhuruto. He wanted a Uhuru. Uh, and I had a discussion, a candid discussion with him. And uh, when he told me that's what he wanted, and he wanted to run this government because he wanted his legacy alone as the fourth president of the Republic of Kenya. I was not fussy about it because he decided that whatever I did in the, second, in the first term to coordinate the government uh, programs, um, work on uh, assignments that would consolidate uh, our plan, he decided that he wanted somebody else to do it. And I didn't complain. So, uh, such, um, executive uh, uh, order number one came into force, establishing uh, a different arrangement in government. Um, and, and, and I had no, I had no quarrel with it because that's how the president wanted to deliver on uh, his second term. Unfortunately. Uh, the people who the president maybe gave that responsibility failed him because the whole big four plan fell apart. The housing plan never took off. The universal health coverage never took off. The whole space on agricultural transformation faltered and we didn't see any of that plan. In fact, at some point it forced the president to change the plan. So we went away from the original plan of uh, Big Four. We ended up with another plan called BBI, changing the constitution, working on all the, the rest of it, which unfortunately again went up in smoke because it was purely unconstitutional. So um, uh, how do I do things differently? If we had done things the way we had done in our first term, making sure there are clear lines between the opposition and government so that government can be held to account, so that the opposition can play its role, so that instead of the opposition being lackeys and being brokers and being the ones organizing cartels in government, and participating in corruption. They should be providing oversight. You're correct. You know, Kenya has, is in a worse place today. There is no oversight. The fellows who are supposed to provide oversight in the opposition are the ones driving the scandals from Kemsa to all these. They are the ones participating in the troubles. 
Uh, coming to my grandlady here. Yes, there are people who are skeptical about whether we will have free, fair elections, and especially peaceful elections. The point of elections being violent for the last three elections has largely been the refusal by participants of the election to accept the outcome of the election. That has been the point of departure. I can say with a lot of confidence that uh, the last two elections did not have tribal uh, anglings. We largely ran uh, 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 two formations, one in NASA, one in Jubilee, that largely represented the face of Kenya on both sides. The only challenge that came is when our competitors refused to accept the outcome of the election, organized demonstrations, swore themselves in, did all manner of things, and drove the country into violence. The undertaking I, I give as a candidate, and I have done it publicly, is that William Ruto will accept the outcome of the election whichever way it goes. <clears throat> And I want all the other candidates to make the same commitment. They have not made the same commitment. They are doji about whether they will accept the outcome of this election. In fact, many on that side, it's in, it's in the public domain, have said they will rig the election. Right? Many on that side have said to those who care, even if William Ruto wins this election, Uhuru Kenyatta will not hand over power to him. They've said that in public, right? So what we need is those of us as Kenyan leaders, the Kenyan public, and our friends in the international community to speak to all the candidates so that they can commit in public unequivocally that they will accept the outcome of this election. <laughs> and I say so, and I say so, especially the notorious ones <laughs> who have never accepted the outcome of any election until they commit that if they lose this election, which is most likely going to be the case, that they will accept the outcome of the election. That way, we can guarantee peace after the election by making sure that all the participants do what I have done publicly. 